Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church, located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday School lesson for May the 2nd, 2021, is Speaking Truth to Power. And our Bible scriptures today are taken from 1 Kings, the 22nd chapter, verses 15 through 23, and also verses 26 through 28. And we're still in this quarterly theme of prophets faithful to God's covenant. And our unit of study that we're in right now is the courageous prophets of change. Courageous prophets of change. We know these particular chapters of this because it was Elijah the Tishbite that was kind of on the scene and he had just prophesied in the previous chapter of where we are today about what was about to happen, what was going on. And, and because Jezebel, the wife of the king of the Northern Territory, Ahab, had just acquired Naboth's vineyard for him, had him uh, lied on and then killed. And, and now she had given as a gift the, the vineyard of Naboth to her husband and and God had pronounced judgment on that situation with the dogs licking the blood. And, and when, and when Elijah came and told Ahab of the judgment, he humbled himself, put on sackcloth before the Lord. And God told him to, to told the prophet, the Elijah to go back and, and, and let him know that these things were not going to happen in his time because he had humbled himself before the Lord. I said to a group of people that, that, Ahab was a very spiritual king. He was the worst king, and the scripture tells why he was the worst king, because when we look around the worst king of the northern and southern territory, when we put it all together, it would seem to us to have been Manasseh before he converted right there at the end of his kingship, but he was terribly terrible, and he had actually offered children at the incandescent arms of Balak, and he had sacrificed children's blood, but this man was considered such a bad king because of his link to idolatry, which brought what was brought on by his wife being married to Jezebel, the, the Baal goddess, the Baal worship had become prominent and this king had fallen suit to the idolatry or, or the false worship of Baal. And he had the prophets of Baal all around. This would not be the prophet today and the ones that, that Elijah had killed. This would be another 400 prophets. So 400 had already been killed by the, e, e, Elijah or will, will be killed by, by Elijah. This, this is, uh, but this is 400 prophets that would give this particular instance at this time to uh, tell him what he wants to hear. Tell the king what he wants to hear. Whatever you want to hear, we, we're going to say that because we are false prophets, so we don't have to be accurate anyway because the, the spiritual prophets, they had to be accurate 100% of the time. There's God's prophets. They were called by God uh, and put in place by God. God spoke to them so that they could speak to his people or on behalf of the people Israel, and, and they did so if they were true prophets of God even the ones that tried not to speak right, they would have to because they were prophets of God and they got their orders from God himself. And we look at today in, in, as that particular chapter ended, the 21st chapter of 1 Kings ended and the, the, the vineyard of Naboth had been taken over by Jezebel and now she had given it to her husband. The, not, the judgment has been pronounced. This man had prayed before God and then there was peace in the land for a period of time as this, 20, uh, this 22nd chapter starts. But there were the enemies and we want our land back from Ramoth Gideon, that, that, that area of Gad. We want it we want it back, and, and we want to get it back from Assyria, uh, Benadad, and, and go up and take it, and, and because he promised to give it back, but he didn't give it back, so we're going to go up and, and take it. So 
He gets, he's sitting there with the king Jehoshaphat, the king of the southern territory, at the same time that he was reigning in the northern territory or northern kingdom and southern kingdom. And he said, well, would you go up to fight with me? And, and, and Jehoshaphat lets him know that my chariots and my horses are yours. We, we're, we're, we're family. We, we'll go up and fight together. And then the natural thing to do was to ask God to ask the prophets, will we be able to go in and defeat our enemy in battle? Well, what happens here is Ahab gets the prophets of Baal and they come in, these false prophets, 400 of them, and Zedekiah there there with them and and making this prophecy along with them and made the the horns, grabbed the horns and and said, just like these horns would that the Lord will give you victory. And those 400 prophets have said that they would have victory. And, and Jehoshaphat realized there was something wrong with this. So he says, wait a minute, is there a prophet of God around? And the Ahab, being a spiritual and religious man, we just said that there in the 21st chapter, he had humbled himself before the Lord. And he did. And, and, and he was one of those people. Even in our printed text today, you'll see how he demands even the message from the Lord, from the messenger of the Lord, even though he would hate the message. Sometimes we don't like the message that God gives us, but we don't want the preacher standing there lying to us. And that was the way that this king was, even though he felt like the prophet probably hated him. So we, we look at our, our lesson where we get down to the day, these guys are getting ready to go into battle. And our main thought verse was not in our printed text today. It was the 14th verse of this chapter say, Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord says unto me, saith unto me, that will I speak. He said that in connection to what was just said to him after he was, he was, they, they were told to go get Micaiah and bring him to us so that he can give me a prophet. He told Jehoshaphat that he never gives me a favorable prophet. He, he hates me. And, and, but the, he said, don't let the king say something like that. Jehoshaphat told him, but now he's on his way. So the person that it went to get him, I didn't read the 13th verse just before the 14th verse. These are things that are important to our lesson, but they weren't in our printed text. The 13th verse said, the messenger that had gone to get Micaiah spake unto him saying, behold now the word of the, of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them and speak that which is good. You go on and you speak that which is good. And then what, what we read there in the 14th verse, Micaiah told him that what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. I'm going to just give you, and that was a true prophet of God. And he would even challenge that at the end of this lesson. And I have a point to make. So I'm going to read something and, and just read it to you and, and let you listen to this before we go into the lesson because it's going to have practical applications on both ends to relate to what, we, what we're into today. This is scripture taken from Revelation, the, the 20th chapter. The first verse of that chapter says, Now I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the keys of the bottom of this pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is a devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him in the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should not deceive the nation no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat, they just sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God. And, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in his hand. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years and the rest of the dead lived not until uh, again, until the thousand years were finished. But the first, this is the first resurrection, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priest of God, not angels, and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. When the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of prison and shall go out and deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, and the number of whom which is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and behold the city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. 
the de and the devil that deceiveth them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever. Two points we're going to make as we go through this about what we just read in the 20th chapter of Revelation. Yeah, I, I know right off the bat, you can see that the prophets there are there in torments. Those that were false prophets will be in torment. Those that were not accurate 100% of the time when they gave a prophecy will be in torment. Those were the, were the people that were, were designated there because they were pro false prophets, but there was someone else that was de designated that was put into the bottomless pit, but he was only put there initially for a thousand years so that Jesus could come down and reign for a thousand years and the people would have peace and prosperity, but there would be babes born. There would be people that would live throughout those thousand years that had never been tempted, tested, and tried, that have never been up against the hand of Satan to accusing them as brethren, had never had Satan telling them that, why don't you go ahead and eat the fruit? God won't, you won't surely die. It, 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 Satan will be released so that those that had never been deceived will have an opportunity to accept the Lord for who he is or reject him because of who he is. So that, that we, we get that out of the way because God uses Satan, even though Satan can't do anything about it. He is, he is a pawn on God's chess table. God gets to move him around. And we said that because we have practicality in our lesson today and we won't understand the lying spirit being used by God. God can use anything he wants to and he's still holy and he still uses that because his people need to be tempted, tested and tried because we're getting ready for heaven. So we look at this lesson as it starts at the 15th verse. We had just read the 14th verse where this prophet said he was only going to say that which the Lord told him to say. He was going to say that which was true. We just read that the false prophets were cast into the, 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 the lake of fire and brimstone. They were, they were going to be there with the, with the sufferer, not able to breathe, nor they couldn't get themselves escaped from the fire. So, so he came to the king. Micaiah. Now he's been brought there by this person that went to get him. And the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go up against Ramah Gilead to battle? And shall we forbear or shall we forbear? And he answered him, go and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it unto the hand of the king. He said, Can, shall we go up to this and, 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 and prosper? This is the king that said this man ever says it, never said anything good to me because because he hates me. So now the king is is, is here and he says, Micaiah, uh, can we go up against Ramah Gilead? Can we take it? Can we go and battle against it, or should we hold back? And he says to them, this man had just told him everybody else went along with it. No, not one person went against everyone else went. So why don't you, when you get there, go along too? So this is his his response to those things there. He answered him, and it, obviously this had become kind of a, a, a habitual uh, poke in the side to the king from this, this prophet here, Micaiah. So go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And I don't know exactly how he said it to him, in what tone of voice he said it, but he was definitely speaking something out of sarcasm. He uh, are, you know, kind of sharp, ironical. And, and it was just something that was a sneering and cutting remark that came from him. But the irony of it just was was even greater than that, because it's, it's, it's saying something in a language where or in a way speaking it to to just really ex expose something and, and kind of be hu humorous. And maybe you can someone would be listening, and get a laugh from it. it uh, and have kind of emphatic effects. So we look at this and, and the irony of it is just overwhelming when he says this and, and we, we look at it mostly as sarcasm, but both of them will fit this irony or sarcasm. And the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? Again, we reference the fact that Ahab was a spiritual man. 
Ahab was a man that wasn't lost on who God is. Even though he married Jezebel and he had the prophets of Baal all around, he did understand that there had to be some reverential treatment given and, and respect and homage given to the Lord Almighty. So he says here, I demand you to tell me nothing but that which is true. Haven't I told you this? Time and time again, can't you just hear him like we, we as parents do? Haven't I told you this? I've told you, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. It's kind of what sounded like what the king is saying here. Don't tell me anything but what the Lord God said himself. I don't want to know all the other stuff. I don't want you poking fun at me. I don't want you picking with me. I don't want those little cutting remarks that you say that may be humorous to you, but I'm not laughing. Just tell me what God has to say. So, verse 17 starts. This gets down to the, the where the nuts and bolts are. Verse 17, said, he said, Micaiah said, I saw all Israel scattered up on the hill as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his own, to his house in peace. First, he says, I, I, I saw all of Israel now, the all of Israel up on the hill. Now, that seemed like it would be just those that are in battle, but I don't know how the prophet was seeing it, but he said he saw this, and then he was going to get the message from the Lord. He said, I saw all of Israel scattered up on the hill. That Now, the reason Jesus said that when they, they smite the shepherd, that the, the sheep will have to scatter. He, he was talking about his death when he died, that the, the, the disciples were going to find a place to hide. They were going to get out of the way, and it did happen. But here we see that this is what happened when a king gets, gets smitten also. So what he said, I saw Israel scattered up on a hill, a sheep that didn't have a shepherd. A shepherd would keep them together. They would follow the shepherd. The shepherd would have the rod and the staff that, that he would pull them back into the fold if they got off a little bit. And, and But here now, these people are there without a, without a shepherd, seeming without a shepherd. This is what he saw. The Lord gave him this vision. He saw this. Now, this is the words of the Lord. He said this. This is what he was telling King Ahab but Jehoshaphat was sitting there, which should have said, well, man, we really ought to listen to this guy. That's, but that's another subject. He said, the Lord said, these have no master. In other words, the king is going to be dead. This is prophetic. This is a prophecy. So what does the prophecy really say? It says the king is going to die. He's going to be dead. Let them return every man to his house in peace. Let them go to their house in peace. How would they go in peace if they were just scattered and their shepherd is dead? What? How can they be in peace? Maybe because the shepherd was so fickle. He was so going the wrong direction. One day he would be going with the prophets of Baal and the next day we see him with sackcloth on wanting to, wanting to praise the, the God himself and recognizing God himself as the Lord Almighty, knowing that when he told Elijah that he was going to kill him, God meant that. So he humbled himself and prayed. So he definitely had some reverential respect for the Lord. Now, now I'm not trying to put him in heaven, but I'm just trying to tell you that Ahab knew who God was. He said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. They have peace maybe because Ahab is not the king and the ruler anymore. And maybe that's the reason for the peace. They're not grieving. In peace, you're not grieving over the king or the shepherd that you just lost. Verse 18 says, and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did not I tell thee, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? Now, this is the same guy that told him, I demand you, did, did, how many times have I told you, I don't want you to tell me anything but the truth there in verse 16. But now he tells King Jehoshaphat that he is, all, did not tell you that this man doesn't say anything good concerning me, any good prophecy concerning me, but evil. And he just means some bad things. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean evil the way that we would think just bad. It is not, never anything good is what he's saying. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left hand and, and on his left. 
So now that this man said that he, he only speaks evil, he, he was saying something that, that, was, that was powerful in that 18th verse before he gets down here to hear the word of the Lord. He was saying something powerful because we hear people say things and it's not what we want to hear. So we think it's a bad thing to hear, but it's just encouraging words that are, that are coming directly from the Lord. When the, the, the pastor, the preacher, the, the teacher is speaking things that are coming directly from the word of God and, and, it's, and it's cutting us to the heart. It doesn't just cut you. It cuts the preachers and teachers too, because the word of God is like that. It is cutting and it is something that will cut down to the very marrow. And, but it's, 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 it seems bad, but it's good for you. It's good medicine for you. So now he's saying, hear the word of the Lord. He said, I saw him sitting on the throne and the host of heaven. In other words, the, the heavenly army was on his right hand and on his, on his left hand. He saw all this in his vision. And verse 20 said, and the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab? Now listen to this, what is going on. Check this scene out. Ahab is sitting in front of, of uh, Micaiah and Jehoshaphat is sitting in front of him. Both of these powerful kings of southern Israel and northern Israel, the southern territory, Judah, and now up in the northern territory, we got these two kings sitting there. And this man says, pointing at Ahab but in the words, I don't know if he was directly pointing at him with his finger, but he said, the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramah Gilead? And one of them said, and, and one of them, one said on this manner and another on that manner. They went to giving ways that this man would go up and fight and be slayed at, there at, at Ramah Gilead. He would go up and fall. That's God, that was God's point and purpose. Now he has trusted the 400 prophets. Now, the things that are going to happen so bad, they're not going to happen in his time. That was a promise that he had given the prophet Elijah. But, but now we're just going to go ahead and get him off the scene is what, what, what God is doing here. We're going to go ahead and move him out of the way. So he needs to go up and, and fight Ramah, at, at, fall at Ramah Gilead. Verse 21 says, And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Now, a spirit. Now, God is a spirit, the scripture says, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So this is a spirit. Just as the sons of God are able to enter into the place of God there and speak to God, we saw that in what is more than likely the first book of the Bible because we don't see anything about the law written in the book of Job. So the, the, Satan was able to go before the Lord and challenge God with, with the, the, his servant Job. And we see this right here. This, these spirits are all around also. And a spirit came forth and stood before the Lord. Now, that's something to help us understand what is going on. The spirit didn't necessarily physically have to stand before the Lord. He just said, I will persuade him. I, I'll, I'll persuade Ahab. And then verse 21, this is, this is God kind of going along with what's going on. And these guys are able to listen to this. Listen, Ahab is hearing this. Jehoshaphat is hearing this. And it seems like one of them would say, wait a minute. We better not go fight right now. We, we might better leave this alone. But the Lord, and the Lord said unto him, this is them, this is Micaiah telling them what the Lord said. The Lord said to that spirit, wherewith? Ask him a question. How will you do this? And he said, I will go forth and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. God said this to this, uh, this, 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 pro, this spirit. He said, go forth. If you want to be a lying spirit in his mouth, that's going to work. That's exactly what we need. These spirits are there and, and, and able to communicate with God. And God says, "Who? how can we persuade him? And in this spirit says this, he, he said, I'll go up and I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. Listen, who else is listening to what's happening? This is going to be the kicker. 
Not only was King Ahab sitting there, the person that is being talked about, the person that had to be persuaded, listening, and this is even before going into battle. He's he, because it, this is true being spoke to power, it, and before he even goes into battle. But who else is there? These other false prophets are hearing what is going on at this time. They're hearing these things being said at this time. I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. These prophets are able to hear this being said. They had already prophesied on this man's behalf about good things, the things that he wants to hear. And now they get to find out that they were lying and they were going to lie anyway because that's what they were all about anyway because they were false prophets. They were... They they weren't prophets of God. They weren't put on the scene by God. We have pro false prophets even now, even though we are in a time where God said he speaks to us through his son. And he said, thou shalt persuade him. The lying prophet. Paul said that there will come a time when man will not endure Micaiah type spirit. The, 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 the person that's going to tell the truth. They won't endure sound doctrine, but they will heap to themselves prophets and teachers having itching ears, people that's going to say the things that they want to hear and not just tell them the truth about the, about God and his, his, his love and his grace also, but there is a dark side to it. You need to tell them the, the gospel message. You need to give them the hard and gory things about this, that if they don't accept Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, hell is waiting on them. That that lake of fire, that the devil is going to be there with the false prophets. It'll be there for them too if they don't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's fire and brimstone. That's telling people the truth. And and the other things, you may can tell them a, a, a little bit here and there. You don't have to point your finger at them and tell them because they already know what they're doing wrong. But you can tell them this. This man told them that these lie, this lying spirit, this is what God, the conversation God was having with this spirit they're saying that I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. Not some of his prophets. All is right there, which means that the, all is the same in the Greek and the Hebrew and the English. And so we know that it's all of his prophets, all 400. If there would have been 800 there, they all would have said the same thing. Go up and fight. You're going to win. So he said, thou shalt persuade him. You will be successful with what God told this this the spirit that came forth and was going to be a lying spirit, you will prevail. Go forth and do so. God said this. God uses those spirits like pawns on the table, on the chess table, just as we read that in Revelation chapter 20, where Satan would be released after he had been in the pit for a little while to tempt, test, and try those that have been born during the time of the millennial kingdom at, that have never been been deceived, have never had the deceiver in their presence, had never e even been tried at, at all. He'd be de de loose for a little while before he'd be thrown into the lake of fire, never to return again, eternal punishment. So he said, I will go forth. And he did. Now, verse 23 says, now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. This is Micaiah talking back to him, not just telling what the Lord's, the conversation with the Lord and the and the and the Spirit. This is him talking back to you. He says, about talking back to the king with Jehoshaphat sitting there, with these prophets sitting there, with Zedekiah sitting there, because the next things would happen to Zedekiah would be mad at him and say, When did God start talking to you and stop talking to me? So there in the in verse 24 and 25, that's not in our printed text. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. Your 400 prophets, I'm trying to tell you, you have an opportunity to turn around right now, change your mind, put on the sackcloth like you did before after your wife took Naboth's uh, vineyard and killed him. You can turn around right now and put on the sackcloth and humble yourself before the Lord, but he, would, he won't do it. Pride would take over at this point because he has this other king sitting there beside him. And, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. The Lord has said these things are going to happen to you. But he has put this lying spirit in the mouth of all of these thy prophets, all your prophets. They're hearing him say this. They're getting mad about him saying this. 
and Zedekiah is really upset about it. Then verse 27 says, Thus saith the king, put this fellow in, 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 in verse 26. I, I skipped over verse 26. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto the Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son. And take him back to, to the city and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in prison and feed him with the bread of affliction and with water of affliction till I come in peace. You send him back, put him in prison until I come back in peace. In other words, he'll be able to get out when I come back in peace, but that's going to prove to you that he is a false prophet. So now it is, it's, it's kind of another challenge, just like the Mount Carmel challenge. It, this, this is another challenge here. He says, and the, and the king put this fellow in prison, put him in prison, let him eat the bread of affliction and, and drink the water of affliction till I come in peace. And Micaiah said, if thou return all at all in peace, if you return at all in peace, in other words, I don't see it because this is a prophecy of the Lord and he's given you an opportunity to turn around. You have the truth. Now the truth can make you free but you will not accept the truth. So he says here, if thou, if thou return at all, the Lord has not spoken to me. If you return, the Lord hadn't given me this. I said this falsely, is what he's saying. This is a challenge. This is a challenge. One man against your 400 prophets. And he said, hearken. He told the people, these prophets that were listening, everyone that's listening to this happening, Jehoshaphat sitting there, Ahab himself, Hearken, old people. I listen, old people, every one of you, to what's going on. We know that the king decided to go on into battle. He tried to disguise himself. They were told from the other army to only look for the king of Israel, the northern territory king. They even went after Jehoshaphat. When they found out he was the wrong person, they did back off of him. And one man pulled an arrow from his quiver and just, just shot it in to the air and somehow... It hit Ahab. If God says you're going to die, if you go into battle, you're going to die in that battle. That's, and that's what happened here. The truth was spoken to power, and this man was proven to be a true prophet of God, a courageous prophet of change. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we do pray that you will help us all as believers in Jesus Christ to speak truth to power. Even when the devil and the enemies of, of you want to stop us from speaking about Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray that you'll give us and, and help us to be courageous, even at those moments, to speak truth to power. Jesus said that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. Help us to always be able to lift Jesus up. Father, we do pray, even at this time, that you will search our hearts. Forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining the Sunday School Lesson Review. Hope to see you next week. God bless you all.